So I actually took this to a hotel jam the other day and um, found it actually fairly useful. This is the quad cortex, obviously. Um, now what's interesting I think about this thing is that yes, it is small, you know, relative to something like the HX Stomp XL, about a similar size. But of course we know that the quad cortex has the kind of double the processing power of a lot of the smaller units so like an FM3 can have dual lamping or like an HX Stomp is like half a helix the quad cortex is like a full powered thing where you can do dual lamping you know for signal inputs and all that sort of stuff so I think actually the quad cortex is probably best suited for this kind of thing where it's not necessarily the heart of a rig let me know in the comments if you're using this thing live but there's just a few things about it that don't suit me super well for live at the moment. And I'll go through those in the video. Um, but in terms of like a desktop kind of editor, that sort of thing, the home use, I feel like it is really pretty cool for this sort of thing. Um, and for, you know, sticking in a laptop bag, you know, you just chuck it in a laptop bag, you chuck it in your guitar bag and go for it. The other thing that sort of for live use, this power supply looks a little bit delicate. Anyway, that, that was just some thoughts, but I wanted to do a video. I'm looking to that preset that I was playing at the start there. Let me know in the comments if you want me to upload it. It's called Johnny Quads. Um, but I'm using the looper in here and you know everything on there, dual amping. But yeah, what was kind of cool about it was it was relatively easy to set up uh, as an interface. And then I could set up one of the chains to just record David, quite straightforward. I opened up the manual just to, to double check everything, but you know, it, it worked. And we'll talk about some of the things like the hybrid mode, which I think is going to be essential before I could realistically gig this thing, um, presumably a, a bunch of other folks as well, where you're using not just scene mode, but also stomp mode at the same time. I think there is a little work around using MIDI, but I'm not going to bother trying to do that. But I think before this is properly ready for kind of gigable use, having a scene and stomp mode might be essential. Let me know your thoughts in the comments about what you want to see from the quad cortex um, before it's, you know, you think up to par. This was David's line here, which was through in two and out of USB 5.6. Um, so that worked really nicely, actually. And I think this is where the quad cortex could be quite a neat thing I'm not sure that it's necessarily the best thing out there for gigging or anything like that but for you know taking as part of a rig for recording taking around using this I know it's like quite a pleasant interface to use in a lot of ways it's compact but also very powerful and you know you've got full USB kind of capabilities I think as part of someone's more portable rig or as part of like a slight home studio kind of setup I think maybe that's where it shines for me the absence of scribble strips and the kind of limitations of the the scene and stomp mode you know like on stage I'm not sure that I'm going to be able to get tons of use out of this kind of thing um, just because it's kind of difficult to see I've got used to the idea of if I've got a lot of buttons having scribble strips so like the fractal stuff or with the helix stuff whereas this kind of what you're seeing up here doesn't actually you know you're having to do a bit of processing I guess once you get used to your preset you'd be fine the other kind of area that at the moment I think is a little bit underwhelming um, would be the delays so again, we're used to in the Fractal and Helix world having a lot of choice. So here we've got analog delay, digital delay, dual delay, ping pong, which again is basically like a dual delay, right? Simple delay, slap back delay, and tape delay. So there's nothing like a reverse delay in there, as far as I'm aware. And also not things that are kind of more specialized, like a, a deluxe memory man or specific emulations. There are utility delays there, I'd suggest, and you could certainly get good results from them, but I think that's one area at the moment which is a little bit underwhelming, and the other, I'd suggest, is the compressor um, area, maybe modulation as well. There's actually quite a lot of areas that you might find a little bit 
underwhelming. So Chief CS3, so that's a Boss compressor. And then the rest of them are sort of more generic. Um, you know, so if you were looking for, like I was, a Ross style compressor, it's not that obvious which you'd be going for. Um, so some limitations, but I think you can still get some really great results out of it, probably. Um, so this preset, just go through it. We've got the Exotic Z Boost. Um, gain at 2.9, bass at 2.5, treble at 5, volume at 5.5. This is only on some of the time, so I've got it set up in scene mode. Then the exotic gain at 5.9, bass at 3, treble at 5, volume at 3.1. Then the chief BD2. If you want to see more on this preset, I actually built most of this in the Andy Timmons one. Gain 5, tone 5.2, volume 6.7. Then using the dual compressor, compressor at 4, EQ at 5, volume at 5.9. Uh, then after that I've got the Freeman BOD, gain at 6, bass 4, treble at 5, presence at 5, tight 5, trim pot all the way down and volume at 5.7. I've added here the Captain 50. So you see I'm splitting here and this one goes into row 3. So row three, this is because I couldn't fit an amp and cab both on there. So you see row three goes down to here out of this cab. And then row, f so row three, I've got the Captain 50, gain at five, bass at five, mids at five, treble at five, I think. <laughs> just wanted to, to explore some things with that. Um, I'm going into the US Twin CK2 Dynamic 57, uh, pan left and pan fully right, and the Ribbon 160. And then on this block here, which goes out to row four, the Cali Lone Star, base at 1.6, mids at 4.9, treble at 5.2, EQ normal, gain at 4.8, master at 3.4, presence at four, output at minus 3.8. But just leave a comment if you want me to drop this into the folder so you can give it a try. But yeah, then this cab here, um, and I'm using the California standard with those settings. So that goes into row four, and then we reconvene here um, for a tape delay stereo um, with these settings. And then another tape delay stereo, 35.5% mix. But what I'm going to do is just some practical things. So I'm going to try and uh, assign this delay to the expression pedal. Let's see how we get on with that. So these are the types of things and types of jobs that I'm going to guess we're all potentially going to be wanting to do a bit of. So I've got a Boss EV30 here plug that into expression one and what I'm gonna try to do is assign the delay here so I've got two delays so what we want to do is assign expression pedal expression pedal one connect and we want to assign the mix control our minimum I have down at about 12% and the max about 37, 38, okay. And then I wanna do the same for this other. The sign, gotta press the sign once we've done that. So I need to go back here and sign expression pedal connect sign so now I have the delay it still sounds quite good.
So that's kind of a useful use of an expression pedal. You know, like Andy Timmons actually uses an expression pedal to blend in. And then if I was in snap C mode, sorry. Um, So that's kind of cool. The issue I think as well at the moment is that some people, I think myself included, on the Helix I tend to use scenes here and snapshots here. So we're still lacking, you know, that hybrid capability. So stomps and scenes. I think that would be totally a thing that people would be wanting to have access to. So I'm going to add in a looper. Where are you? I'll add in a looper here. I also want to add in a freeze and this will be the preset that I'm using in the introduction now um, so if we put in a, a utility wait it's not it's morph isn't it what I'm looking for where are you morph freeze um, and then where does that end up um, so I definitely don't need that assigned here so how do I just remove assignments? Do I have to go into the block? That's assigned to B. Unassign. Uh, amp. Unassign. So these automatic stomp assignments can be a little bit of a waste of time as well, I feel like. Uh, press the target foot switch. Also not clear there which foot switch is still free for it to be assigned to in that view. I think that could realistically use some improving. Um, compressor. I don't really want the compressor to be accessible via foot switch either. That's not necessary. I'm assign and I'll put a looper here then. And I think the, the thinker would be that you would try and plan your presets in a way that you always had a looper, for instance, down here, if you're a looper user. Um, or that, you know, you'd always have your freeze puddle up here or that sort of thing. I think that's the way that you could build this stuff sensibly. Okay, let's just go back to scene mode. And I'll go to RC Boost. Save there. But those are just some things. I've also thought that it might be practical to have a parametric at the end of your signal chain just in case you need to make some on the fly tweaks because obviously we don't have like high cuts on the cabs themselves so you could for instance bring in uh, a high pass can we do that yeah if you're on a gig and you're finding you know, that you, you really need to make an adjustment. You could do this on the fly fairly easily, I think. So having a parametric EQ at the end, I think would be a good thing. Yeah, so other things that we could do as well, and I think I want to try this, is pan these amps, because we've got them on separate paths, and then we hopefully would get quite a wide. And then the other kind of thing that I feel like we're missing. Actually, that's fine, isn't it? So you swipe down if you wanted to see your kind of metering. Um, but then you'd lose your kind of snapshot. So that is a useful meter, but I wonder if like, instead of that, you could have it. Okay, you could do it like that.
So all in all, I think we're now about, I think, where we should have been at Quad Cortex launch to a stage where actually you've got a thing which is quite inspiring in a lot of ways. You know, the access to loopers and freezers and this sort of stuff is exactly what would have kept me interested in the first place. I think it's now kind of a chance to, to grow the delays, a chance to grow the library of stuff. For me, I have a real question mark about how they're going to implement the plug-in part of it because if it is just the case that you have, you know, like plenty amp one as an option available on here, I think that's just so far away from what the experience of the actual um, neural plugins is that it's almost, for me, not really worth doing. So I'm interested to see what that will look like. I think the hybrid mode should be prioritized. I think bringing in more delay options and more versatile stuff, more compressors, more modulation could be the sorts of things that folks are going to need. Not so much, I wouldn't imagine that tons of people are going to be using the, the mini voicer because that has a very specific sound that I'm not sure jives with loads of stuff. So for me, I think the practical things that Neural DSP should be prioritizing are that scene stomp hybrid mode um, and then just bringing in some delays and stuff that are, are a little bit more. ready to use um, so yeah those are my thoughts on that let me know in the comments if you want me to make this preset public I'll catch you in another video soon feel free to like and subscribe cheers